On today's Maker Mashup, we're gonna be talking about how to increase the build volume on the C201 printer. So I get a lot of questions in the comments about this 3D printer and how to make it bigger. They want to make a very large printer or they want to go ahead and build a printer so that way they can build larger things. And that's a great way to approach 3D printing that you want to build something really, really big. But one of the things that I always talk about is the right tool for the right job. And this particular printer you can make bigger, certainly as large as you really want to build this printer. But there are some challenges to that and making sure that you are either addressing speed or quality and those are distinctly different things when you're doing 3d printing when i talk about quality i talk about a print that looks very very fine detailed harder to see the layer lines it looks like the exact thing that you had the model of so if you're printing a benchy it looks just like a benchy then we talk about speed. Now, if I wanted to print a Benchy in a short amount of time, that is a different goal altogether. So that use case is completely different. And to that end, if I wanted to build something really, really big, it's gonna take a longer time to get the quality, but it might not take a longer time if I don't care about the quality and I just wanna get it done fast. So those are the type of things we're gonna be talking about today and discussing the C201 and how you can make it bigger, but what those challenges are. So with all that said, let's get to work. So let's break down this printer in how we would have to make it larger. So some considerations that you're gonna to need to know when building a bigger printer with this design framework, and I really use the word framework because as soon as you try to put a larger bed on here, you're gonna be creating your own type of printer. So you're gonna be using this more or less as a framework for building your own printer. So first, let's talk about the print bed itself. Now the print bed is designed to run a 200 by 200 on the C201. Now, the reason why it's a smaller bed is for a few reasons. First, weight. Now, when you look at any large format printer, you're talking about adding considerable weight to the bed for every single millimeter of aluminum that you're adding in that size of the bed. Now, it's not just the bed itself. It's also the structure underneath the bed. Now, my variation on this C201 printer has got a steel bed that I took off of the raised cube video. And if you haven't seen that raised cube video, there's a card at the top where you can follow that. But basically, this one has a lighter weight bed. So the key that you're gonna need to know is that the bed weight drastically changes the dynamics and the way that the printer works. So why is weight so important? Well, Newton's law is why it's important. So objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Objects at rest tend to stay at rest. Every single time that you use a bigger print bed, you're trying to put more objects in motion or more weight in motion, and you're also trying to stop more weight that is already in motion. So your stepper motors are going to do that, but they have a finite limit. Now, a slightly larger bed, say a 300 millimeter bed, you could probably start and stop it pretty quickly with regular steppers. However, what you notice when you start increasing weight is it will introduce more ringing. Now, if you're not familiar with ringing, what ringing is, is that when the mass of your 3D print bed is starting and stopping, that mass will then go ahead and vibrate a very little amount. That vibration then causes artifacts in the print, which are called ringing, and they look more or less like waves in your prints. Now, you can look at this test cube here and you can see one side on the X axis has absolutely no ringing. Now, the reason why it doesn't have any ringing is because there's very little mass in the X nozzle moving back and forth. However, if you are printing at a higher speed, the, you'll introduce ringing on the Y axis. And you can see that here in this test cube. So you can combat that some and reduce that ringing by going ahead and having a lighter bed or moving slower. So now we start to get back to that use case where we're talking about speed or quality. The offset here is that if I want the quality with a larger bed, I have to go slower. 
Okay, so we just talked about speed and quality, so let's talk about what it's gonna take to make this printer bigger. Now, the first thing you're gonna think of is, I just need a bigger bed, but it goes way further than that. You need to make sure that the printer overall can support the larger bed that you wanna put on it. And then you have to think back to that use case of speed and quality when making these decisions. So what happens when I put the 300 millimeter bed on? Well, we're gonna find out that we don't have the ability to traverse that full distance. And the reason why is because this printer is only designed to move the bed 200 forward and 200 back. So in order for you to have a, a larger printer, you're going to need to expand that by 200 millimeters. So that way that the rods that the whole size of the printer can then traverse that whole wider space there. So if you're looking at upgrading it just for the Y axis, you're talking about replacing all the rods that are in there. Now that's also going to affect your X axis. If this current setup is not wide enough and it really isn't to support a 300 millimeter bed, now you're talking about changing the rods on the X axis as well. So those all have to be longer and your base extrusion has to be longer. Your top extrusion has to be longer. So you can see where I'm going with this. The, the Everything has to change on the printer as far as the size and dimensions in order to support that larger bed. Now you've got the weight and you have the size. So the price of your printer is gonna go up, but you can go ahead and make those changes. Okay, so let's talk about the power requirements of a larger printer. First, this printer uses about a 350 to 400 watt power supply, which is very adequate for a small print bed like this and a nozzle. However, if you're gonna go with, let's say a 320 millimeter bed or even larger, you need to start thinking about how you're gonna power that. And in most cases, you're gonna have to power that print bed separately, either with its own power supply or a very, very large power supply and then drive that print bed off a of MOSFET. So what is a MOSFET? A MOSFET basically controls the amount of power going to the print bed. Now, it is just a transistor and it's controlling the voltage that's going to it. However, for the sake of controlling it on your 3D printer, you're gonna want a MOSFET module. So that MOSFET module is now an additional cost that you're gonna to have to incur if you're gonna make a larger printer bed. But the reason why you need that larger MOSFET is so that way you can send more power. A larger print bed is gonna require more power. And for a large enough one, you're now talking about a power supply that is probably gonna be running 500 to 1000 watts. So now we're talking about an increased cost. Now you can do that with two power supplies, but again, now you're incurring two costs, one to power the print bed and one to power the printer. So when you're looking at making a printer larger, you need to evaluate the cost and the way that you're going to properly apply enough voltage to the print bed to heat that up. So another electrical concern is gonna be your steppers. Now a NEMA 17 stepper generally will have enough torque to drive bed sizes, even in the neighborhood of 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. However, the larger you get from there, the weight and size of the bed may start causing skip steps. Well, you can compensate a little bit for that with more current going to the stepper. However, at some point you're gonna run into a limit. The drivers themselves generally have a limit of the amount of current that they can drive. And it may not be just as easy as a little bit more current on a super large print bed. So if you need to drive it with multiple steppers, you're now talking about expanding it so that way you can have two steppers go at the same time, very much the way the Z axis works on this. So that's one way to address it, or you're talking about increasing the stepper size. So say a NEMA 23 stepper. Those drive more torque, but have different power requirements. So again, as you continue to increase the complexity of a large build, you're gonna run into problems like this that you need to consider when sizing up the way that the printer is put together. So another electronics concern is gonna be all the wiring. Remember, you're gonna to need to make everything longer in order to make a larger printer. Now, if soldering is not your thing and you're not very good at it, that's gonna be another challenge to making a larger printer. Okay, so that's a lot of changes so far. I wanna put one more out there that you need to consider as far as the nozzle. Now, most 
small format printers like this one where it's only 200 millimeters has a 0.4 nozzle. Now a 0.4 nozzle is great, but it still takes a long time to print things. When you look at a regular Benchy, you can probably knock one of those out in about an hour to two hours, depending on the speed and the quality that you're putting into it. But say a 0.4 nozzle with a two millimeter layer height, you can probably knock out a Benchy in under two hours. Now, if I take that same Benchy and I make it three times the size, because now my printer is, say, three times as large, that same Benchy that's three times the size is going to be talking about a full day to print that at a 0.4 layer height. So that gets back to our original use case of speed and quality. So what do I do if I want to be able to print something faster and I want to be able to have a larger build format? Well, that starts to change the nozzle. So at that point, we want to probably step up our nozzle to let's say even a one millimeter nozzle. Now that's a lot of 3D printer filament that that printer is going to be able to go through, but that nozzle size will reduce the amount of time that it takes to print something. So let's get back to our Benchy example. So let's say I change that nozzle from a 0.4 millimeter to a one millimeter lot nozzle. Now we're only talking about 14 hours or about half the day to get that Benchy printed at three times the size. So that's still a considerable amount of time for a Benchy that's only 300% in size. Another nozzle concern is going to be whether or not you want to go direct drive or a Bowden. The problem with going with a Bowden is you increase the Bowden tube's length, and that means that you're going to have longer retracts. If you go to the direct drive style, now you're talking about increased weight, plus you have to change the entire carriage on this printer, because this is set up as a printer that is originally designed to use a Bowden instead of direct drive. But if you go direct drive, you now have to change the carriage out. Now, if you're an experienced 3D printer and enthusiast and you're able to do that, that's great. But for somebody that's just starting out, you may want to consider that in deciding whether or not you want to build a large format printer or the one, uh, the C201 with the smaller format. You may want to start off with something like this and just build this so that way you understand how all the parts work. This was really designed as a project for people to learn how to get into 3D printing and build their own 3D printer and be satisfied with the result at the end. My personal preference is to not use a printer like this for large formats. And the reason why is that I like a large format printer, but I would prefer that in a Core XY versus a Cartesian format printer. Now, the differences between the Core XY and the Cartesian is that instead of moving this entire bed around, we're now only moving the print head around. And that removes a lot of the artifacts that we talked about with ringing and bed weight. It removes those from the equation. Now we're only talking about moving the nozzle around and that changes the way that the printer operates. However, a Core XY is considerably more difficult to build. We're going to be putting together another video series like the C201 that is going to be our X301, which is a Core XY printer, and that has a 300 millimeter or larger base to it that allows you to use a larger format printer, but get the results of a smaller printer like this. So today we discussed a lot of the challenges behind making a larger format printer. And it's not a task for everyone. If you feel like you've got the skills to put a larger printer together and consider all of these different variables we discussed today, I definitely recommend that you put it together. So after talking about everything, if you're still interested in building a large format Cartesian printer, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. And if you need any help building your printer, feel free to hang out in our channel Discord. We have a Discord where you can talk with other makers and a lot of professionals. Here's some of the names of some of the MVPs that we have in there that are electrical engineers, software engineers, all sorts of really, really smart people, STEM teachers. We all hang out together and we talk about the projects that we're working on and share our knowledge with each other. So the links for that Discord are down in the description. So with that, it's going to bring the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos like the X301 Core XY build that we're going to be building here this year in 2020. So click that bell, get those notifications. And until then, we will see you next time.